Well, isn't this a weird angle? Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to How Train Your Gavin. I am on the floor again, as you do. And this week I'm gonna be celebrating Paulathon, and this will be my third Paulathon. Oh God, it grows up so fast. It's, it's been a moment. It's honestly been a moment in time. Every single Paulathon that's happened, I mean, well actually no, it'll be technically my fourth because Paulathon the Meltdown happened last year as well. But this is like the third February Paulathon I've been a part of. And it's just a really special readathon that happens every year. That's hosted by Jade from JD Re Reads. And it's honestly such a highlight of my year, seeing the community come together, just seeing so many familiar faces take part in the readathon. And I just associate so many amazing memories with Paulathon. I remember my very first one when I went to visit Jade. Oh, sorry. oh now you can tell your viewers how small I am. Oh, hey. <laughs> um, so this took me by surprise. Like, you're not even in the shot, Jade. What the hell? <laughs> uh, Hi. Hey, she's down here. So beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah. And that was my first time meeting Jade and it was just so cool. And I do have a vlog of that. I've got a link down below. And then 2021, it was a time we were in lockdown in the UK and it was just really fun and great escapism to be able to do Polathon while in lockdown. And I also have a vlog for that one too. So I will link that one down below. So this is my third year doing Polathon, my third Polathon vlog. I'm gonna make it a fantastic one. You just watch. So you'll have already seen everything online because it's 45 minutes until midnight sprints that I'm going to be doing with Jade and Pris. So Pris as well. Hi Pris. We are both co-hosting Polathon this year. We are both leading separate teams. So I am leading Team Explorers and Pris is leading Team Arctic Animals. And Jade is doing her own thing. She's the goddess. She is doing the Pilgrim's Path, which I find just such a genius idea this year, honestly. And it's going to be such a blast, honestly. I'm so excited for these sprints because there's going to be a huge reveal tonight as well. Nobody, at least I hope nobody, knows that Pris has travelled all the way from the Netherlands to visit Jade. It and I just find that incredible. It's been planned for a while because guess what? Tomorrow morning, I am also getting on the train to Ipswich to visit Jade. November, December, January, February. It's only been three months since the last time I saw Jade and I'm already desperate to go back. I'm so excited. I cannot wait for tomorrow morning. And I mean, doing, doing midnight sprints and then I have a train at 8.30 or is it eight? I should probably double check. It's very early. I've got a very early train and am I gonna regret my life choices? doing midnight sprints and then getting a train in the morning, maybe. Editing Gav can answer this with a fucking yes, but nobody knows I'm going and we're gonna keep it secret until I get there. So at the midnight sprints tonight, I'm gonna have to pretend that I'm not going. I'm gonna have to try and leave early-ish so that I can go to bed and have at least some sleep before tomorrow, but also not raise suspicions. That's gonna be really, really hard, but you know, I'm a good actor, so I'm sure I'll pull it off. I pulled it off too well because I missed my fucking train. I just can't wait for everyone to say Pris get revealed tonight, because she's traveled all the way from the Netherlands, man. The Netherlands. It'll be the first time I get to meet Pris tomorrow. I'm so excited. And I think Steph is also coming as well. I really, really hope so. It's gonna be chaotic. It's gonna be chaotic. I'm only staying there for the one night. I am coming back on Tuesday night. Ah, oh, full of lies. Lies you tell. Lies you tell. And I'm, you know what, I feel like that's probably gonna be enough time with Pris, quite honestly. <laughs> Hearing me together, it's gonna be a time. So I'm excited and scared. So I've got my things ready for tomorrow. I've got my clothes ready. I've got some stuff that I'm taking down ready. And the next thing on my agenda is telling you what I'm gonna be reading in this vlog, or at least attempting to read. And all of these fit my Explorer Path prompts. What were they again? Okay, so the first prompt is an adventure, and for that I'm going to be reading The Secret of Nightingale Wood by Lucy Strange. I'm not going to tell you what each of these books are about until I've read them, so the intro isn't overly long. And then I'm going to be reading My Life is an Ice Cream Sandwich by Ibby Zaboy for the cold word prompt, and ice. Ice is the cold word. And then for foiled colour... Foiled cover? Is this fo oh, hang on, I've got this the wrong way around. And then for the foiled cover, I have Echo North by Joanna Ruth Meyer. 
And then Icy Magic, we have The Raven and the Reindeer by Tay Kingfisher. And then finally, for A Paula Fantasy, I have The Bright and the Pale by Jessica Rubinkowski. I'm very excited about this TBR. It's going to be amazing. And if you don't know Paulathon, it is essentially a week-long read-along where you have to read Paula Fantasies. Or essentially anything Paula related, like icy, frosty, snowy, you know, stuff like that. Because we are still in winter, it's just a great readathon to take part in. So I will be attempting to start The Secret of Night in Galewood by Lucy Strange tonight during the sprints. We're going to see how much we get done before I have to skedaddle. And yeah, I will catch you in the next update, which will probably be at Jade's maybe. Trying to update with everyone there is going to be an absolute nightmare. I cannot wait. We're recording! Hey! Hey, my beautiful babies! My loves and my lives. Pris, do you have something you want to ask me? Yes, I want to ask if you want to tickle my balls. <laughs> always, Pris, always. You are the person with the biggest balls, and I love it. The biggest and the hairiest. You are the only one that can tickle them, okay? Thank you. Tell Jade to keep her hands off. Yes, keep your hands off. And Jacob. Thank you. To tickle your balls. <laughs> <laughs> All of them are dirty bastards. What have I let myself in now? Woo! Let's go! <laughs> Happy Ooh. Polathon! Welcome to yeah. Polathon 2022! Hello, everyone. everyone. Um, as you can see, I'm joined by my team captains. Well, I'm at least joined by one of our team captains. Um, mm -hmm. I have some dirt to dish on Briss. Um, yeah. We're going to drag her. Yeah, <laughs> she's not here currently, so we can like dish some dirt right now. Um, she's a liar. She has been lying to all of you all day. Like, And I think she needs to be held accountable a little bit for the mm -hmm. fact she's been saying some shit online that's not true, and we're not okay with it. Mm. No, I'm the first person to call press out on her shit. The first, yeah. all the time, all the time. So we're going to have to deal with that when she gets here and we'll dish dish that out. Um, but in the meantime, Isabella! Your boyfriend's here! Time for dinner! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Got you guys! We fooled we you! <laughs> How did you possibly know? <laughs> oh, we we covered our tracks very well. We even had the fake press in the bottom. Even have yeah, little fake press here. This fake account entirely. We're all liars. <laughs> Chris, it's so happy. Well, I love seeing both of you guys together. Honestly, I'm so jealous. Like Jade gets to meet you. Oh, it punches me in the tits. It's just it amazing. I feel like I'm living uh, a dream. I, yeah, yeah, I can imagine. I am here. <laughs> I'm here. The biggest plot twist of the year. <laughs> So, so Gavin, when are you coming up? <laughs> down, down, I, down, 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 yeah. I've already been, guys. I went in November. Do you think I live a lavish lifestyle? Come on. I've just been to London as well. Do you think I just pay money? I'm, well, ju I'm so jealous, though. I'm shopping on Tuesday with well, her. Bitch. Yeah. Well, bitch, you can't use my discount, can you? No. No, so I can't. <laughs> Oh man, I, I honestly wish I could. You guys honestly make me so jealous right now. Well. Welcome. Other viewers. To, I was going to say day two. It's not, yeah, it's it not day so two. confusing yeah. that we've already done one lot of sprints. It's yeah. still day one. But hello, I need to turn my emails off. Hello, welcome to hello. day one of Polothon for Thon. anyone who wasn't here for midnight sprints last night. Um, Gavin will be joining us. I think he's with his mum. He said he had Ugh. family stuff on, but he's got the link. And he, he has his priorities like not straight now already. He's just a fucking dick, a wanker. What did you just say about me, bitch? <laughs> Hello. 
Got you. <laughs> I got you all. I know how terrible we are with lying to you all. We always. We are so bad. Like, look at this. Oh, Steph. Oh, Would you Steph. like a link? <gasps> yes, yes, Steph. Can you come on sprints, please? Come on, Steph. We miss you so much. We love you. Ah, she gave a one set. Uh, okay, now Steph needs to go. Um, <laughs> I'll send her the link. Yeah, yeah send um, the link. It would be cool. <laughs> Imagine if Steph came into rain. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Am I not good enough for everyone? Probably. Really? Probably. Am I not? Like, yeah. Is this not enough for you guys? <laughs> send her a linky link. I will, I will. Okay, Hold on. Now, Let so. me do it. Let me get to now. the right the wrong account. Stop it! Right, I've sent Steph the link though, so she can she can come she on. Has. This lie has made my year. See, this is when lies are a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Steph, where are you? Steph, hurry! Yeah, come on, Steph. Maybe she doesn't want to come on. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe she's. I don't think she does. Backed out. Yeah. Oh, there she is. She popped up. Oh. And yeah. after oh, life. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Yeah. Hello! <laughs> I've got a bit red. I've been trying not to laugh out loud for like the last five minutes. <laughs> Stay at my face. <laughs> we are dead! Oh my god! <laughs> We're all together! We're all together! Can you believe this? Oh, we got you again. <laughs> Thanks for accepting the link, Steph. You were whacking the Narwhal around, and I was like, oh, oh yeah. I wonder if that's going to be a dead giveaway or not. Oh, crap, yeah. <laughs> Press, shut up. No, I won't. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Lovely vlog update. Bye. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm not down in it. I've only got this much left. So I'll probably down it later. I think I'll, if I down this, I will be drunk. Do it then. Don't down. Okay, don't do you it know then. What happened last time. Don't tell me what to do. Exactly. Okay. okay. Exactly. Rocking out to shoot. Oh yeah, we're kind of. You know what? The only way to help us sprint is by watching us sprint. Watching us sprint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know if you can actually see. see. I don't know if you can actually see because it's make us camera. read. Yeah, this is the only way to make us read. I don't know if you could actually see us. But hi, um, I'm at Jade's now. Really? Yeah. Really? That is. <laughs> oh God. Um. A surprise. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah, and we've been drinking for a little bit, and we have Steph over there. We know Steph. My Steph from Steph Loves. We got my Jade from over JD Ray Bleeds. We've got Pris from Pris Sprints. But we're just all friends. We've got Gav. <laughs> what? what is this? This update is we're so Gav. shit. We've, we've got Gav from Gav Drinks. <laughs> yeah, we've got Gav from but Gav Drinks. we're just all friends. How well, we're just all friends. We're just all friends, but apparently oh, this- hang on, you've not introduced these lot. Oh yeah, we've oh, got- yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll save this one for last. Uh, we've got Cecilia. She's breaking our heart. <laughs> we have Cecile, the seal. It's the seal. Cecile, the seal. And then we have the Scissor. The narwhal. It is a narwhal, right? Yeah. The narwhal. <laughs> Cecilia, Cecile, and Scissor. And then Syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> you gave me Syphilis! No, you gave it to if yourself. If you know, you know, Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I got on the train. I came up. I think the last time I spoke to you was last night before the sprints that we did mm -hmm. last night at midnight and i said i was going to be reading the super nightmare word read it really enjoyed it that's all you need to know i'll tell you wow. more about it later good vlog update yeah yeah spectacular I, i'm always so in depth with my book reviews what what reading did you give her four stars it was a four stars it was really really good give me all yeah. the feelings i wouldn't say wintry though i feel like the cover's a little bit misleading I don't think it was very wintry. But you know, you can't knock it for the cover. The cover is gorgeous. Yeah. And then I started My Life is an Ice Cream Sandwich by Abby's Boy. I will give you more clearer what thoughts. What are they for? Uh, this one's Adventure. Okay. 
which is the first prompt for explorers. And that's the cold word, right? And this is, and then ice cream sandwich. Ice is the cold word. So I'm going in order of the path. I am being smart about it. Pris is cheating, but I'm not. Why am I cheating? Because you just are. You're on the Arctic animals. I swear to God, I haven't been reading all day. That's how she's cheating. Because I've been knitting. Mm -hmm. Knitting. What? How many points do you get for knitting? Zero. Damn. 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 Oh, but I've got my scarf. Where is it? Good lord. It's somewhere. Um, it's somewhere. It's somewhere. I do have a scarf. Chris knitted me the nicest scarf ever. It's the best scarf I've ever owned. <gasps> oh my god. Freaking hell. Oh, it's underneath the chair. Oh. <laughs> You made me get up for no reason. You did that on purpose. Look at this beautiful scarf. You probably can't see it very well, but when I get in the light, I will show you it better. But it's beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, Pris. You're very hand welcome, love. Knitted. Hand knitted. Hand knitted. She's used it to scratch her snatch a few times. <laughs> yes, I did. I'm pretty sure Lily licked her arse Yeah. <laughs> Lily licked her arse all in it, and then Pris did. <laughs> Down on, on top of the scarf, licking your asshole. But no, it's beautiful. So. Yeah, I'm coming to sit next to you. Um, I don't think anyone can see anything. But We're ridiculously out of focus. Ridiculously out of focus. Probably can't even hear. But I'm at Jade's. Hello! <laughs> I'm at Jade's. And we're still, we've got 10 minutes left of the sprint, so we're going to make this quick. I just love being here. It is, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's just cozy. It's very nice. You probably couldn't even see Chris for all the bottles. I love you guys. I love you. you. I'm not drunk. I just love you guys. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little bit drunk. You're high on life, aren't you? I yeah. love you guys as well. You're my besties yeah, in the well, entire world. When I saw Steph and Chris for the first time in person, this is our third time meeting this one. It's with Jade, yeah. Um, we all froze at this. It was like we've been friends for years, which we actually <laughs> have been to be fair. Yeah. We have been friends for years. But seeing each other in person for the first time ever, beautiful. Yeah, it's just amazing. I bet you I don't even have the mic turned on. <laughs> I <imagine. laughs> oh god. Ollie, I think can you right is the green thing moving? What huh? green thing? Oh yeah, huh? Okay, yeah. then the mic's on. <laughs> okay. The mic's on, okay, that's good. Huh? Please leave that in. Huh? You're you're having sex while she's a fucking dying now. <laughs> Happy first day of Polathon. <laughs> I finished a big okay, so I'm fine. Yeah, you did. You finished? I finished. You finished? <laughs> Oh, no. doing a fake orgasm noise. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I didn't think the female orgasm existed. Oh, I finished. <laughs> well, you finished your book, sorry. No. Um, yeah, yeah, not quite. She's Twice. still, she's still oh, frosty down getting there. there. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Getting there, getting there, getting there, getting there. Oh, ah. right. Move to the left. <laughs> left. A little bit higher. <laughs> left, Jake. Left. <laughs> You're on the left. <laughs> right, Steph. <laughs> yeah. Um, so okay. that's that's the first update. <laughs> We're just gonna keep drinking. Yes. Are you marry? Yeah. And yes. bright. Finish your books. Yeah, marry bright. Finish your books. <laughs> Finish mine today. I think you will. Oh yeah. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> you got this. 215 pages into a 400 page book. Yeah. Oh, probably right. Oh, it's one in the morning. <laughs> oh my lord, yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> tripping my mind. Nom 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 nom. Honestly, I can't take these two anywhere. Orgasm Central, it's what it's the effect I have on women. It's the effect yeah, I have on women. Yeah, it kind of do. So yeah, that's my first vlog update. I will let you know more in depth thoughts when I've, I'm not as tipsy. Good job. Good Bye. Job. Bye. Well, the vlog's not over yet. See you in the morrow. Don't tell them. Yeah, see, yeah, see you tomorrow. See you yeah, I was gonna say, tomorrow. This is the end of the vlog. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you enjoyed. <laughs> and I will see you in the next video. Bye. 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 Bye.
you farted? Chris, are you farted? <laughs> Chris, are you farted? <laughs> Shall disgusting. Fucking one of yes. It was fucking one of yes. Disgusting. Oh, it was a queef. I've just noticed you've got bees on your socks. Oh, that's cute. So I'm giving vlogception. Vlog set. Actually, that looks really cool. That looks so rather artistic. Wow. Uh, I want to jump oh. now. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> giving Steph a massage. There we go. Her shoulders should carry in all the books. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was really good. And the other one. Dip it really sensually. <laughs> that is won't. not sexually. It is when it won't fit. <laughs> no, not. <laughs> what the fuck? How sad is it that I'm now back home? I am gutted, absolutely gutted. Oh my Lord, it's Thursday, so I came back home yesterday. I could just book a train and go back up right now. It was sad, it was a sad time. I don't think I've updated since the first night I stayed at Jade's. I don't even think I gave you a good update that time as well. I think I was rather tipsy. And if I recall, Pris shouted out that this was a shit vlog update. <laughs> what is this? This update is so shit. I better rectify that right now. Also, talking to Pris, can I just show it off for a second? Isn't this just, I mean, one, it's long and that's just the way I love it. Look at this, like this is absolutely stunning. Pris, you have outdone yourself. Also, how do people put on scarves? I do it like this. I like pretty much strangled myself with it first and then just pull it down a bit. There we go. Oh my God, don't I just look stunning in it? Pris. Uh, Chris, thank you so much. Oh my God, it's so comfortable. I'm just gonna wear it for the rest of the update. Well, yeah, it was so amazing to meet Pris and Steph for the first time as well. The fact Pris came over from the Netherlands as well, like all this way to say yes for Paulathon was incredible, honestly. Like, oh, we just had the best time. I absolutely loved meeting them and Steph as well. We were supposed to meet two years ago. Then COVID happened. We were gonna meet the weekend that COVID, the restrictions started. That was when we had planned to meet. And then obviously everything locked down and things, so we didn't get a chance to do that. So that was two years in the making. Ah, oh, miss them already, I really do. We had such fun on the first day. We had takeaway, we did some Cards Against Humanity, we had drinks, and um, I'm trying to remember what else happened now. <laughs> anyway, we woke up the next day, we went book shopping, and we broke the till at Waterstones. It was incredible. Never in my life have I seen so many books try to go through the till at one time and then crash the computer. It was amazing. We had to then do it in parts, so that was hilarious. But yeah, we ended up having coffee. We went to Nando's. It was just like the most chill and loveliest time ever. I loved it so much. And then Wednesday morning, I ended up having to get my train home, except my train was delayed 20 minutes and I had a connecting train where the change over time was only eight minutes. So the fact that my first train was 20 minutes late made me stress that entire train ride. But by some miracle, we were only two minutes late to the station so that my connection time was only six minutes. 
And I genuinely thought I would miss my next train, but I didn't. And I was in first class on the way back, but honestly, it was a waste. So yeah, the entire first class experience was shit. Honestly, it was shit. I didn't like it. Should I talk about the books I've been reading for Polathon? Because I don't think I've actually talked to you about them very much. I do have The Secret of Nightingale Wood. This is what I started with by Lucy Strange. Finished it on the first day. I finished it on the trade ride down to Jade's and I gave it four stars. It was really good. This follows Henrietta, whose mother is quite sick. Her dad has gone away for a job and then she ends up getting taken in the care of Night Jane in Hope House. And yeah, strange things happen. She meets a woman in the woods who is like the witch of the woods. But it's not magical. This isn't like a magical book or anything. It's very, it is historical. It's very realistic. It is, it was such a good time as well. Honestly, I was really enjoying myself and the story and the mystery of, well, one, this woman in the woods, but two, the story of Henrietta and kind of her backstory as well. There was quite a bit of grief in this and exploration of that. So it was a very beautifully told middle grade and probably not Paulathon esque well, like now that I've read it, but you know, the cover is so... And the prompt that this filled was an adventure, and I do still think Henry and I went on a bit of adventure in this. But yeah, if you like yourself a historical middle grade, I think it's actually pretty, pretty good. But yeah, it's it was a really nice time and really beautifully written, so I enjoyed that. And then I finished My Life as an Ice Cream Sandwich by Ibiza Boy on the train back, and it was very, very good as well. I think I gave this one four stars too, so four stars for both of them. This one was Cold Word, so ice. And this one follows a young girl called Ebony Grace. And she goes to live in New York with her dad. So she leaves her mum behind and she doesn't really want to do that. But she sees everything as science fiction. Her imagination is incredible. She sees everything as sci-fi. And that is just like how she copes. That's how she copes. People think she's strange, but that's how she copes. And you know, she's very close with her granddad who really does like facilitate that behavior because he went to space. And you know, he is somebody who's very influential in Ebony Grace's life. So yeah, it kind of goes through Ebony Grace as she moves to New York and she has to deal with that and how she copes with that. So it's not really sci-fi, but what I do love about this is that it does make it feel like it. There are kind of comic little strips in there as well, as well as like a Star Wars kind of strip too. And it's just all integrated in the story very, very well. And yeah, I just thought this was very well written as well. It kept me reading. I was very invested in Ebony Grace's story. Definitely by the end, it's very touching and just a very good time. So yeah, that's two books down. I know I've given like bare minimum reviews and stuff, but you know, spoiler free, spoiler free. And now I am reading Echo North. So I am 107 pages in, but also can I just say as well, this bookmark that Jade gave me of the Polathon mountain. Isn't that just so stunning? Thank you so much, Jade, for that. I love that. Yes, Echo North by Joanna Ruth Meyer. This is a sort of east of the moon, west of the sun retelling. But just follow Echo, whose father gets himself a new bride, and she's an absolute bitch. But anyway, he ends up getting kind of lost and Echo goes to try and find him. But she does come across a wolf and this wolf bargains with her that she must live with him for one year in order for her to save her father. So yes, 107 pages into it. I am enjoying it so far. I am really enjoying the character development as well as like how much of a bitch the stepmother is. Like she's awful but also just like the magical touches to this as well. So I am really enjoying it and I will most likely finish this. Well, yeah, I'll probably finish this on sprints tonight. I really do hope so. I'm doing some sprints with Becca and Ashley for Team Explorers, but also everyone is invited. Everyone's welcome, of course. Yeah, we thought we would do some this week, you know, represent our team. That's uh, pretty much the update. I do still have The Raven and the Reindeer to read and The Bright and the Pale, but you know, it is only Thursday and I do want to film a video after this too, so that I've got something to come out as well this week. And I think I'm gonna do absolutely fine because I am off work. I am off work this week and most of next week. So it's all gonna be good. But yes, I'm just gonna do my video and continue to miss Jade, Steph and Pris. I had every intention of updating you after I had finished Echo North this morning, but I ended up starting The Raven and the Reindeer by taking Fisher in the sprints I was doing with Pris, Sasha, and Jade. And I just didn't want to put this down, so I ended up reading all of this without updating you on what I thought of Echo North. I'd also ordered a Starbucks during that time as well, 
and I had every intention of getting my Starbucks, sitting down, doing this update, and you know, living my basic bitch life. But because I didn't want to put this down, I ended up drinking all of that Starbucks and not even having it for this video. So this isn't an empty cup, I ended up ordering another one. Not just so I could have it as, you know, a kind of comfort in my vlog update, which I do. I love having a hot drink. It is a comfort for me whenever I give updates and things or do videos. I was like, okay, I could order another one, and I did. So I apologize. But anyway, yes, I have now finished, well, two books since the last update, Echo North and The Raven and the Reindeer. Echo North was very, very good. I gave it four stars. I absolutely adored the world that was built in this. I loved the castle that Echo ended up going into. I love the idea of the mirror books, so like you could literally walk into any book. It's a bit like Pages and Court a little bit. I really liked the relationship between Echo and Wolf, and it did feel quite Beauty and the Beast inspired as well. I was feeling those vibes. Beautifully written. What else can I say about it? I was surprised by a lot of it, especially towards the end. I really felt all of the icy kind of magic in this. It was sort of like if you enjoyed North Child by Edith Patu, then you would enjoy this one as a young adult book. And I really like Echo as well as a character. She encountered the wolf when she was younger and he left her face quite disfigured. So she was an outcast her entire life because of that and everyone judged her as soon as they saw her. But what this book did brilliantly was the inner reflection that she had and sort of how she saw herself and what she had to overcome in order to see herself as beautiful, as powerful, as strong. And I really enjoyed that in this too. Story-wise, it was very exciting. I was... I did get a little bit bored halfway through, but it wasn't a bad thing. Now, I'm not going to penalise the book for that. I do need to learn that books do need to slow down every now and then in order to kind of ramp up towards tension and action. The slow parts don't take away from it. I just, I, I finished Raven and the Reindeer, so I'm like, ah, I want that one. But this one I gave four stars. In fact, in Core Pile, I think it comes up to 4.5 stars. It was just really, really good and perfect for Polathon as well. I could not have read it at a better time. So, Echo North. Highly recommended. So next, The Raven and the Reindeer. I just finished before on Princess Sprints. I'm about to film my Tick Tick Boom therapy song picks my 22 books for 2022 video. So I'm not in the sprints anymore, but I did want to finish this in those sprints and I did. And I give this one five stars. I bloody love this book. I love the Snow Queen story in general and I adored this. It felt pretty much the same as the fairy tale of Snow Queen for most of this. And then we get to the bandits and that's where things start to divulge. And I love the way it divulged. I love the story anyway, so I'm really glad that it kind of followed the same structure of it for most of it. So we had Gerda and her best friend Kay gets taken by the Snow Queen. She ends up going after him and she comes across, you know, different people on the way. And I just absolutely adore that story. I love the Hallmark Channel movie of it as well. I think it came out in 2002 with Bridget Fonda and Chelsea Hobbs. Love that version of the Snow Queen. Fantastic film. I watched it every year because I had it on DVD, but I've lost that DVD. And now I don't know where to stream it from. It might be on Netflix. I don't know. Or Amazon Prime. But I love it. I, in fact, it's put me in the mood to watch it. I might watch it tonight. Should I? I have filming and editing to do tonight, so maybe not. But anyway, five stars. I freaking love this. I love the story. I love the characters. I really enjoyed the twist of it as well because we do have some sapphic romance in this too. There was some parts that were quite gross. It involves, you know, skin in a reindeer and wearing its skin. The skinning of this reindeer lasted three freaking pages. And then when you, you know, get the sensory description of what it's like to wear it as well and how it felt being in this skin, it was so vile. It made me like, Ugh. but I still enjoyed it. I was like, oh, this is dark. This is so dark. I mean, it's been a long time since I read the Snow Queen fairy tale. I don't know if Hans Christian Andersen's version of the fairy tale is rather dark and twisted like that. It probably is. It is, you know, a fairy tale. And a lot of fairy tales are fucked up. But I don't ever remember them skinning a reindeer and wearing its skin. <laughs> but other than that, fantastic. Absolutely loved it. And I love that story. It is my favourite, favourite fairy tale. And I don't know how many times I can say that. But yes, I would totally check out more from this author. And I think it's actually a, a pen name, but it doesn't matter. I loved it. It's my favourite Polathon read so far. In fact, every single Polathon book has gotten better than the last. Like, I really enjoyed The Secret of Nightingale Wood, and I gave it four stars. And then I really, really enjoyed My Life is an Ice Cream Sandwich by Ibby's Boy. I gave that one four stars, but it was, like, slightly better than The Secret of Nightingale Wood. And then I really did enjoy Echo North by Joanna Ruth Meyer. I gave that one 4.5 and then 5. So the next book is, where am I putting these? 
The Bright and the Pale by Jessica Rubinkowski and I have such high hopes for this one now you know every single book has gotten better than the last so hopefully we can end on a high this is the last book on my official Polathon TBL I don't think I'm gonna get it finished today but potentially start and finish it tomorrow tomorrow's Saturday so I could I don't think I have any plans I will hopefully have the video finished tonight and edited and everything and all I'll have to do is focus on the Polathon blog so yeah I think I could potentially do it tomorrow although I do have some writing I need to do so I might do that first tomorrow and then read this. Yeah, this one follows Valeria. She's one of the only survivors of the Freeze, a dark magical horde not mountain unleashed on her village. And she has been on the run from Zor, who is determined to imprison anyone who managed to escape. Well, it's inspired by Russian folklore, and I do find myself loving Russian folktales and any retellings of Russian folktales. Right in the pale. I think it's going to be awesome. Hopefully, anyway. We need to end on a high here. I DNF'd it. Okay, it wasn't that it was, like, terrible or anything. I just wasn't caring. I really wasn't feeling the story or the characters or anything. I was just sitting through this just thinking, okay, I think it might just be my mood because I did, again, finish this recently and really loved it. I don't know if maybe it's because it's following this. Like, actually, it's following a string of successful Polython reads. I don't know if maybe that's the reason why I wasn't feeling this at all. I will give it another go at some point. Maybe the next Polython. I might try and start with it, though. I just wasn't... Yeah, I really wasn't connecting. And I've heard this from a few people as well. I did see Jade's vlog as well. Also, if you haven't already, do check out Jade's daily vlogs for Polython. They are incredible. I mean, the first three are the best because I'm in them. But also, the rest of them are phenomenal as well. So, I'll link all of them down below. But yeah, a few people have said the same thing about this book. So, maybe it's not a main problem. Maybe it is this book. But yeah, I just, I really wasn't feeling it. And I thought, you know what? I'm not going to force myself. I'm just going to stop while the going is good and hopefully move on to something that I will enjoy more. So yeah, putting this one down for now. And it is actually Monday as well, I should probably mention this. It is Monday. I was gonna update last night, but I was on sprints for most of the day, and I was just knackered by the end of it. I just couldn't bring myself to be in front of a camera. So I'm doing my vlog update today. It's early Monday afternoon. I've been editing this vlog up to now, and I just wanted to make sure that I had everything sorted. But after I DNF the Bright and the Pale, what I read yesterday during the sprints was The Ice Whisperers by Helenka Stakira, and and I'm giving this one three stars. It's not a bad book by any means. I've forgotten most of it already. I didn't gel with the entire book. I didn't mind the characters. I actually should tell you what it's about. This one follows Bella who goes to live with her uncle in Siberia and she ends up going into this portal into the past where she meets a long lost sister. Her sister's called Renya and she literally is sort of like cave woman kind of person. So now Bella has to navigate this prehistoric world. But I did really enjoy the scenes between Bella and Renya. I think they go well together because they're really conflicting. They come from totally different times and seeing them interact in the way that Bella tries to explain present day things was quite funny. So I enjoyed all of that and stuff. I just think maybe, I don't know, like I was I wasn't really finding the story all that interesting to keep my interest all the way through. So I was drifting through it. And I don't know, again, if maybe it's because it followed Raven and the Reindeer and I just can't, well, maybe I am in a, like a sort of slump where I've read some really fantastic books and now everything that comes after just pales in comparison. I don't know if that's just the case with this, but I, yeah, Middle Grade Monthly is gonna be interesting because, I mean, I'm already starting to forget a lot of what happened, like plot-wise. I just, I remember certain moments and that's all fine and well, but I think overall I just didn't connect and that's fine, you know, I'm sure a lot of people will still enjoy this, but I'm just not really one of them. And three stars is still a good rating. And I still absolutely love that cover. The cover is gorgeous. But I didn't find it as captivating as I would have liked. And unfortunately, that means that we did end Paulathon on a bit of a bum note, which is a bit of a shame, you know, a DNF and then a three star. Which, you know, three stars isn't bad, but after these four, you know, it's kind of a little disappointing. But that does mean I managed to complete the Paulathon Mountain. So I am very happy about that. We have no idea who won between the Arctic Animals and the Explorers, but you know what? It's the taken part that matters, not who actually wins in the end. And I'm not saying that as somebody who lost last year, but I'm just proud of myself. You know, five books for Polathon. I managed to complete my path. I mean, five and a half, five and a half books, which, you know, I was so ahead at the start of the week. And then as soon as I came home, I realized I had a million things to do and I really slowed down, unfortunately, but I still managed to finish 
and I'm still really super happy with it. I'm so happy with how Polathon went this year. Honestly, I had the best Polathon yet, and I think a lot of people feel the same way. Jade always makes it such an accessible and fun readathon for everyone who gets involved with it. So I'm just like so chuffed a bit with it. I'm so proud of Jade. I'm so proud of Pris, my, you know, rival. You know, I'm proud of like Steph and Sasha and, you know, everyone who really got involved with Polathon this year. I'm just so thankful to honestly everyone who, who took part. You know, if you came along to sprints, if you tweeted about it, honestly, I loved seeing it. And I'm sure Jade did as well. It was just such a fun week. I'm so sad it's over. This time last week, this time last week I was at Jade's. I hate this. I hate that it's already been a week since then. Honestly, I'm gutted. Gutted. But yeah, now it's a waiting game to find out who won. You know, it's fine if me and the Explorers lose. I'm so proud of my team. The Explorers, you did incredibly well. Honestly, I'm proud of each and every one of you guys. I don't care who wins, I had the best team, okay? You guys were the best. I am honoured to be part of the Explorers with you, okay? So I'm sad to wrap this vlog up. Honestly, I didn't want it to end. I didn't want it to end, but you know what? Uh, it, that's what happens. It just means that now I can be excited for Polathon 2023. Bring it on. But yeah, that's the end of this vlog. And again, a huge thank you to Jade for hosting Polathon and everyone who got involved. A huge thank you to my patrons as well for being so incredible and amazing. I love you guys so, so much. And a huge thank you to you for watching as well. I really do appreciate it. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. But do check out Jade and all of the Polathon co-hosts down in the description box as well. And I will hopefully see you in the next video. Bye.